Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. Uh, it's pretty late in the evening and um, I'm actually just going through uh, one of my older sketchbooks here just to um, kind of just go through and see what I've been up to and what I've been kind of forgetting and you know it's been a very very busy busy uh, couple of months and so I am just trying to find my groove and get, get back into um, my art again and uh, it's not that I've been in a slump I've been drawing pretty regularly but um, you can see some of this stuff here uh, it just uh, is sort of stream of conscious stuff, just kind of silly stuff. Um, not things that I'm taking too seriously and just drawing inspiration from different places and making sure that I'm keeping up with my, my artwork on my terms and, uh, and how I like to do things. And um, just thought I'd have a, um, a short conversation and um, to see where this goes and uh, this is sort of a uh, <laughs> just a, a one-off video where <clears throat> excuse me that I'm just sort of sitting down and relaxing and um, I'm actually gonna have a uh, you know, have a cracker if you don't mind but uh, like I said it's it's pretty late right now it's uh, after it's almost midnight but um, Hmm. Just finding some quiet time. And chew with my, chew with my mouth while I talk. <laughs> but uh, just trying to find some quiet time to sit down and make a video. I haven't put out a video in quite a while, so I figured it's a good opportunity to just sort of talk and draw and eat my cracker here. But um, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope things are going great in your world. I know for me, I celebrate Christmas, and uh, I celebrate with my friends who celebrate Hanukkah, and uh, we're getting ready for the holidays, which are fast coming up on us in just a few days, so I think I'm ready. I think I'm prepared. I think I got everything under control, so i um, feeling pretty good about that, but uh, yeah, it's been very, very busy lately. Uh, the work that I do, <clears throat> hold on, excuse me one second, I'm just uh, quick drink here excuse me for that but uh, yeah so just the work I've been doing lately has me pretty consumed it's a lot of design stuff I've been doing a lot of logo designs and icon designs and things like that which have been fun and challenging but uh, they they are fast and furious and they they can burn you out pretty quick as far as your, your work goes, because once you're done with one project, another one pops right up. And sure enough, you know, you gotta gotta jump back into the onto the bicycle and start riding again just when you thought you were done. But that's sort of the nature of graphic design too, is that uh it's sort of a nonstop process. So when I draw, as you see here, I, I usually am drawing just for myself. And it's pretty stream of conscious. There's no real you know, thought behind this. I'm just kind of having some fun here. But uh, it does get tiresome after a while when you don't have the time to do the things that you enjoy doing, uh, whether that's reading or drawing or just enjoying your life, maybe going for a walk. You know, it, it can be very uh, stressful is too strong of a word. It can just sort of be distracting when you're you're trying to get some things done and uh, work and you're thinking about your artwork because that's something for me it's always on my mind and uh, I, I can't get to it sometimes there's there's days I come home from work or there's days I'm working on a project late into the night and I say geez I, I would love to sit down and do a watercolor painting and you know maybe either something in my fun style here or maybe something more traditional but uh, like I said I can't get to it so this is one of those times when it's a Sunday night and it's very quiet and uh, everybody I think is asleep by now but uh, for me I'm just sitting here thinking about doing some art before I go to bed and this will definitely relax me I know that 
So this is where I've found myself right now. So uh, I figured I'd share this with you and, and maybe you might enjoy this and uh, <clears throat> maybe this might help you relax as well and maybe, mo maybe motivate you to uh, find some time for yourself as well because I know that we can all use that time. That would be something glorious for all of us to just have that little bit of time that we need to uh, do the things we enjoy. And uh, some of the things that I enjoy doing, uh, if you're familiar with my channel and with me, you know I play music as well. And so uh, that's what I've been spending a lot of time doing is just uh, coming home from work, getting things done, and then finding some time to just sit and play my guitar. Uh, I play a lot of acoustic bass guitar, which is one of my favorite things. So I'll just sit in my bedroom or I'll take it into the living room or just wherever I can to just sit and just play some music. It's a lot easier than drawing for me because it doesn't require me to think too much. I just sort of respond to the instrument. I just put my hands on it and just start to play and whatever comes out comes out. And it's it's more than fun. It's just it's really just speaking, I guess for lack of a better way, it's, it's speaking to myself, it's meditating and, and kind of doing sort of a chant with my hands and with the sound of the instrument. And um, whether I'm playing a familiar song or I'm just playing a basic scale or a riff or something, anything, it's sort of like I get to speak out in a different voice that is to myself and sort of to the air around me. And it's just really really relaxing and um you know that's um that's one form of meditation that i have in my life that i i can count on that i can just sort of you know just introduce day to day and just come home like i said from work and relax with and there's no pressure there's nobody saying you have to do it this way you have to do it that way and that's how this feels doing this kind of a drawing as well is uh there's no pressure there's no one sitting here saying hey you have to do it this way there's there's rules that you have to follow and um if you don't follow those rules then then hey you know you're not going to get paid or you're not you're not going to get to come back to work tomorrow we're not going to you know want you to do our job for us because at work you know if i'm creating something or any any project i'm working on at work if, uh, if it's not done to the specifications that the client wants, then guess what? I'm, no, I'm not needed. I'm no good because um, it has to be done to the way someone else wants it. So my work, even though it has my style and my signature, you know, it still has to be done with the sensibility and in the direction that the client wants it. And sometimes that can be challenging because maybe my style doesn't mesh with this particular client maybe this client has a different vision of what uh, they thought something should look like whereas i'm presenting them with an idea that uh, i think is a solution for you know what they're trying to achieve and what they're trying to communicate but uh, sometimes i've found that um, you know it doesn't work that way and in communication, whether it's with a client or with a family member or a friend or a stranger on a bus, even anybody, that uh, sometimes we don't communicate properly. And when we try to communicate in a certain tone or a certain way, it's misread, especially with texting and email. We don't always get to have the correct tone that we want. And that can be a challenge, too, for, for us. And... Um, you know, so the point is that sitting here right now in this quiet place by myself, just relaxing, it's so nice to have the freedom to just spill out these little drawings and not have to be held accountable for what they are. They can be whatever I want. They can be silly. They can be serious. They can be fun. They can be scary. They can be rude. They can be whatever I want them to be. And that is the point of this kind of drawing. It's just uh, it's just expression. And I really love that. And so the more I get to do this kind of stuff, the more I know that uh, 
it not only makes me a better artist because I'm, I'm continually practicing, but I think it makes me a better designer because I'm sort of going off on a tangent of, you know, something that I enjoy. Oops, sorry, that's my alarm going off there. Sorry about that. But, um, so I think it makes me a better designer in some ways. It makes me a more mindful person of my own space and my own uh, objectives, things that I want to do. Because I do want to sit and draw more. I do want to paint that landscape or that, you know, still life, uh, which I enjoy doing. And I've been looking into taking some classes, some art classes, uh, just some refresher classes, because I miss that. I really miss having the ability to go into a classroom full of students, a lot of which are, you know, far superior in skill than I am, and others who aren't as skilled as I am. And uh, you get to see, you know, that different range of, of individuals in a non-competitive way, but yet there's still that slight sense of wanting to see what other people are doing and, uh, and how they're manipulating their tools and how they're drawing and creating and finding ways maybe that I didn't think of before to pick up from them and sort of take... Uh, take under my own wing and that's what I've been exploring so I'm looking maybe after the new year to maybe sign up for a new class and say hey you know this night this night class is going to be something for me uh, we'll see what uh, <laughs> we'll see what comes from that but uh, excuse me for eating again So these little folks here, um, I'm not sure what inspired these guys, but um, I think I've been seeing a lot of holiday nutcrackers and different um, different holiday characters. And I'm also a I'm a big fan of the story Pinocchio. And I know you're familiar with the uh, the character Pinocchio, but the story, you know, it's just such a, a wild story and. Um, it's one of those tales that, uh, if you haven't read it in a while, I really suggest maybe going back and checking out the story of Pinocchio because it's such a uh, such a strange tale. And uh, I love the character Geppetto, Pinocchio's creator, and uh, what he experiences and how he's, you know, just such a, a central figure that gets sort of cast aside because Pinocchio takes over. Uh, in the, in the storyline, but um, you know this this Geppetto's an old man. I would love to know what Geppetto did, you know, during his younger years, and uh, what was what was he like back then? And you know, I'd love to flesh out that story a little bit and see how far back we can take Geppetto, and um, you know, find out what his history was. And you know, why don't I uh, real quickly? Why don't we? I'm going to reach across here and just do a quick search on my computer. Because now I've got myself curious. Um, <laughs> so I did a search for Geppetto, but I came up with Gelato. Um, I think I forget how to spell his name. That's the problem. So Let's do Pinocchio. Probably won't be able to spell that either because it's so late and I'm, I'm so tired. Oh, there it is. It was two Ps. Geppetto. So in the story, his name is Mr. Geppetto, and he's introduced when a uh, there's a carpenter finds a, a block of talking wood, and he, you know, is about to carve it into a leg for his table. Um, so Geppetto makes him into a, a marionette, but, uh, you know, as I'm looking at it here, 
it says that Geppetto is an elderly, impoverished woodcarver. Um, he wears a yellow wig, which I never knew he wore a wig. That's interesting. Um, it resembles cornmeal mush. <laughs> I never knew that. And uh, his neighbors call him Polinda to annoy him, which is, um, you know, like polenta, the, the cornmeal mush. Uh, that's really funny. And um, I didn't know that. So the character of Geppetto is, is old and impoverished. And um, it's really interesting to me because we don't know much about the history of this man. So, so who is he and what does he do? We don't know much. Um, I'm just reading here that it says, uh, oh, there's another version of Geppetto that's from a different story, but that's not, I'm not interested in that. But yeah, so I mean, we have this um, impoverished old man who's a woodcarver but we don't know much about him. And uh, there's no real history given about this man. So I wonder, you know, could we create our own history for this poor Geppetto character? You know, this, why is he impoverished? What, what did he do in his life to get to that, you know, that stage where he's um, unable to make a living from his work and he's just you know, barely, barely scraping by, you know? What is it in in his life that he couldn't accomplish? Why is he alone? Why is he? Why do his neighbors want to annoy him? What what's the whole deal with Geppetto? I'd love to know more about that character. Anyway, I digress too much because um, the character Geppetto is just such an interesting character to me that um, I'm gonna just sharpen this pencil real quick. Sorry for the excess noise there. But um, yeah, what is it about this character that uh, is so central to the story, yet we, we, he disappears through most of it and then reappears, I believe, toward the end? But um, what is it about Geppetto that's so intriguing? You know, that, well, for me anyway, I don't know about for anybody else, but for me, I want to know more about this character, Geppetto. I want to know... You know, what's his deal? What's, what's his story? How come he's in the situation he's in? And, you know, when I was a younger artist, I never really gave much um, consideration to someone like Geppetto. It, it was just sort of like, oh, yeah, he's the old man in the, he's the, old man in the story of Pinocchio. But um, now that I'm older in my years and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm heading towards the 60 range now. And that's, that's mind-blowing to me because my age you know, is one of those things that I still feel in my head that uh, my head says that I'm young and my heart says that I'm young, but my body certainly is telling me otherwise. But uh, I think my head knows better. So <laughs> my, my head knows the truth, but uh, my heart keeps telling me, hey, you know, you're not so young. And I still try to live like a young man. I still try to, you know, run with the best of them, so to speak. But uh I think I can relate to Geppetto more at this age. So it would be fun to find out or even create a storyline for this character, Geppetto, and, uh, and say, hey, you know, this is, this is the stuff that he went through. And um, maybe just sort of play with that a little bit. That's, a, that's kind of a fun thing. And uh, I noticed there's a film that just came out recently called Joker. I have not seen it yet, so I can't really speak about the content of the movie. But it is interesting to me that, uh, you know, with the flood of superhero movies we've seen in the past decade or so, even before that, there was, uh, in the early 2000s, there was Superman remakes and Spider-Man remakes, all kinds of superhero movies being remade. And they're fun. They're great, fun movies. But uh, they've sort of run the gamut, and they've sort of run out of ideas now. And so... You know, they're coming up with new stuff based on villains. <laughs> and so it seems to me that this Joker film is among one of the first that's getting real big, you know, publicity for being a, a villain movie. So would it be out of the realms of possibility to see something like a Geppetto story come come out some at some point? 
I don't know. I think that would be kind of fun to see. Uh, see the world from a different perspective of one of these Disney-type characters, you know, like Pinocchio. You know, we have um, kind of newer stories like Malevolent and things like that that are really fascinating characters to watch and, and see how those unfold and are created. And there's some, some crazy new stuff that comes out like Stranger Things, which is a little more than I like. It's a little, you know, it's a little out there for me, but it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. But um, I love the classic tradition of certain stories. Uh, Beatrix Potter, for example, she, uh, she did the um, the, uh, the the old English Peter Cottontail books and so forth. And, and she created a mythology in what she did. The um, Winnie the Pooh stories, as innocent and simple as they seem, they're really, really complex. I mean, Winnie the Pooh, for example, is just one of those characters that um, is obviously beloved and everyone pretty much knows, you know, we all know the story of, uh, of this character. We don't really, some people may not know the depth of the character and, and the whole full story, but we're all aware of Winnie the Pooh. We've, we've seen Winnie the Pooh and, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that is as popular in, in the American culture and the English culture as Totoro and Pokemon have become in the Japanese cultures and so forth. And, uh, I just wonder how, um, how the backstory would be for, say, Christopher Robin's parents. You know, could we, could we come up with a backstory? Or if you take Peter Cottontail, you know, what, what's the backstory with, with Peter Cottontail's mother or even the farmer in the, in that story? There's so many other possibilities. And that's one of the things that I love is to just explore those ideas. I love going outside the box of normal thinking as far as, you know, what you're given is for a story. We're told the story and we go with what we're told and that's the information that we get. So we're told the story of Pinocchio. We're told the story of Peter Cottontail. We're told the story of, uh, you know, um, Winnie the Pooh or Totoro or those things. But yet it opens sort of a door for the possibility of new stories to come from those that we've been told. And uh, I think Tim Burton has done that masterfully where he took something like Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a wonderful, wonderful story. And uh, the fact that he turned that wonderful story and those amazing characters and put them into a musical, it's like, that to me is just exquisite. And uh, I was fortunate enough to see a Tim Burton exhibit in New York some years ago. And uh, I got to see the development sketches for a lot of those characters. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, that that is inspirational. I went to the went to the museum gift store to actually purchase a copy of one of the books they had, but uh, they were sold out. And so I kept saying, oh, I'm going to buy it online, I'll buy it online. So I never really got back to that. I kind of forgot about it. But it makes me think, hmm, maybe I'll revisit that and check that out again because I'd, I'd really like to check out that book that I saw there. It was just a, it was a collection of the exhibit drawings and so forth. But, um, yeah, Tim Burton took that wonderful holiday Christmas story of Santa Claus and all that, and he just flip-flopped it on its ears and gave a whole new perspective to it and... It's very, very rare to see that happen and to see it happen in a situation that it's done so well, you know, where, where the characters are so well-developed and so impactful where, um, you know, we can watch that film Nightmare Before Christmas any time of the year and it applies during Halloween season in October and it applies during the Christmas season and uh, I just love the fact that, um, you know, he was able to transcend just your basic kind of like, you know, holiday storytelling to something much deeper and bigger and really put a question mark on it. And, and the characters that he, he brought out in that are just 
staggeringly good characters. You know, they're strong, bold characters. I really love that. The Sally character alone and the doctor, the mad scientist. If you've never seen Nightmare Before Christmas, I really encourage you to go check that out because, boy, you're, you're in for a treat with that one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people who will, you know, I'll, I'll watch that anytime, anywhere. If it's on even halfway through, even if it's almost over, I'll stop and I'll watch it. It's uh, such a really inspiring piece of work. And uh, I think at some point in, in Burton's career, that's going to be labeled as his, perhaps his true masterpiece, because it's just, it's that good. He's done so many good movies and so many good things. Not not to say he hasn't done some <laughs> stuff that I don't like. Uh, his Planet of the Apes movie was not one of my favorites. I'm a big Planet of the Apes fan. And, uh, you know, that, that film did not, did not really reside, uh, resound with me as far as, you know, his creative spirit. The costumes in that film were fabulous, but uh, the story itself was a little not for me, I would just say. Just not, not my cup of tea. But uh, some of you might have liked it. I don't know. It's, maybe it's a, it's a great movie to you. I just thought, yeah, maybe maybe shouldn't have touched that one, I guess. I don't know. And as far as that, that film series goes, The Planet of the Apes, boy, I'll tell you, that's another franchise that um, they created uh, They created a story there, and it just really inspired me as a kid. When I was younger, growing up, and those Planet of the Apes movies came out, and we went to see them, it was just something else. It was just, uh, boy, those those movies really got to me as far as, like, the wow factor. And... Um, I still watch them to this day, even the old ones, the uh, the original ones, the uh, Charlton Heston ones, because they're just so well done as far as, you know, it, compared to today's makeup and today's costuming and so forth, they're, they're fairly rudimentary in contrast to today's stuff. But back then, that was pretty high-tech make, uh, make, the makeup stuff, the uh, the masks and all that. It was pretty high-tech, and, and the fact that they had to mold those things didn't have CGI back then. They didn't have computer technology and all that. So, you know, it, it's just always, to me, that's just amazing, amazing stuff. And that's when I come back to what I was talking about before, about characters like the ones that I'm creating now. You know, the uh, these, these marionette-type nutcracker characters. And I think about Pinocchio, and I think about even Cinderella and the old Disney characters, how there's so many opportunities for stories to be retold from those stories. Um, you know, I, I'd love to hear more about the wicked stepmother in, uh, in Cinderella. I'd love, to, I'd love to know what made her the way she is. Or let's go back to, to Snow White and, you know, the evil queen there. You know, what's her deal? Why, why was she so nasty? What, what got her so against this young girl. I mean, obviously, she, her beauty and her youth were, you know, challenging this woman's sanity, but uh, what what was it in her life that was so bad that made her want to go after this young girl? So, um, but, you know, there's there's so many stories to be told, and is it possible to create something new? Maybe that's a discussion for another video, but, uh, boy, you know, I've I've heard it from countless, countless students that Everything's been done before. There's nothing new. You can't create anything new under the sun. It's all been done. And um, even my kids and I were talking about there's a new Star Wars film that just came out this week, and or maybe it's been out for a while, but uh, everyone's going to see it this weekend. And you know, everyone's excited. And I remember seeing the original Star Wars movies when they came out and really enjoyed those. You know, I was young and I loved everything, everything about those films. I loved every single character and, and they were so well done and just brilliant but they are slightly derivative of other stories uh there's i guess there's a whole mythology of two heroes in japanese culture um where you have these twins that are you know heroes and so you have the luke and leia characters and you also have the famous retelling of king arthur and his court where you have, um, you know, King Arthur would be Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi was the uh, the old wizard Merlin and 
so forth. Uh, you have Han Solo, who is like Lancelot. So it's a classic retelling of an old story, which is fine. I mean, they, they changed it enough and made it their own, but uh, it's not like it's such a... Um, it's not so far off from that original King Arthur story that you can't really see the the relation between the two, and, and it works well independently, each one. But, um, you know, is there anything new that can be done from that? And that's what the Star Wars franchise has done. They're starting to pull out all these new stories. Uh, I know there was a, uh, I think it was on the Disney the Disney Channel has a new show called um, The Mandalorian, which they're kind of fleshing out the story behind Boba Fett, that character. And I know Star Wars fans are really excited about that. They did a Han Solo movie, so, you know, they're they're branching out into telling the stories, kind of like I was saying about the Joker movie. <coughs> Excuse me. But... Um, there's opportunities for that. There sure are. There's so many opportunities for that. But, um, you know, for now, I'm just sort of really enjoying this time that I'm having doing my doodle here. And uh, what about you? Is there any any stories that you can think of that you grew up with or that you heard when you were younger? Maybe some kind of folklore tale uh, that you think might be worth exploring deeper and finding out more information about it. I know in Scottish literature, there's um, there's a whole ton of really unique stories. There's a book called The Mabinogian, which is full of Scottish folklore. And I've read most of that stuff, and uh, I really, really enjoyed that stuff. And um, I won't get into the different stories. There's too much to tell, but... Um, there's just so much rich history in it, and some of it's just a kind of weird. <laughs> you know, it's hard to follow. But um, there's just so much rich history behind some of these Celtic stories that I never knew growing up. And when you start reading about it, you're like, wow, this is, this is heavy-duty stuff, you know. And if this is what they were talking about, you know, in years past, it's like, is this stuff being handed down? Is the Scottish culture, you know keeping these stories alive and, and are those worth exploring and maybe you come from a different culture there's you know so much from you know the african culture that i don't know about and maybe that's something that i want to explore in the next year ahead because i don't know enough about it and enough of my friends could probably lead me in the right direction and say hey you know you might want to check this out and you might want to check this out here because it's a great story so there's so many different you know, avenues of, of information out there that I am not aware of. So, you know, and, and a lot of times people will say, oh, did you read this book? You got to read this book. And you say, oh, yeah, I'll check that out. Let me let me write that down. And then you look at it later and you say, oh, I'm never going to read that book. I don't have time. I, I have 10 other books on my list that I want to read. And so you never end up getting around to the ones that people recommend you to read. And sometimes you do. Uh, there will, there's oftentimes somebody will recommend a good book to me, an art book especially, because I don't read a lot of um, fiction these days. I love fiction. I love science fiction, especially like uh, sort of stuff that takes place nowadays. And, you know, I, I, I love that kind of stuff. I read a book called Snow Crash by, I think it was Neil Stevenson or something, um, and really loved it. It was an intelligent book, but it was also sort of cyberpunk kind of literature and I really enjoyed it and uh, there's a couple of books I have on my plate right now the the book that I have specifically that I'm reading is a uh, I'm reading a John Singer Sargent book and um, I kind of want to know more about his history I don't know much about John Singer Sargent I've adored his work for as long as I can remember but I don't really know much about his his life and uh, I want to find out more about it so I, I picked up this book on Amazon and said, you know, I'm going to check this out and read a little bit more about John Singer Sargent. He's one of my all-time favorite uh, watercolor painters. His, all his paintings are great, but his watercolors especially really just inspire me because I look at it and I say, you know what, I quit. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. I can't, uh, I can't paint the way he paints. He's just you know, phenomenal. So 
Um, sorry if this was off camera at all. I'm sitting here drawing and talking and not paying attention to the video part. And I hope that uh, didn't ruin the experience for you. But uh, anyhow, so this is my uh, this is my quick doodle for tonight. I am just really enjoying the time here. Uh, I have some time off from work, which is great, and I'm really excited about that. I get to spend some time with my family during the holidays. So excited about that. I hope you are excited for the holidays. I hope you're doing well, and I hope things are going good in your part of the world. And uh, this this little break that I took and time we shared together was, was fun for you. I hope this was enjoyable. Um, you know, these... these Little characters here don't really mean anything. I'm just having some fun, just kind of creating some little characters. Maybe I'll do something with these in another video. Maybe I'll, I'll bring these back into into another format um, because I kind of like them. They're they're different and unique and kind of kind of strange. But um, I had fun drawing these. Thank you so much for coming by and just uh, sharing this time with me. And uh, I hope again everything is going great in your world and. I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's been great spending this time with you. And um, I will talk to you again real soon. Thank you so much for watching. And I, I have a lot more content coming, so don't worry. There's, there's more videos coming ahead. So uh, we'll, we'll catch you soon. Have a great Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah. And if you don't celebrate, that's okay too. I just hope you have a great uh, week ahead. And um, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great night.